Hello, this is Mrs. Robertson and we're going to go over the review before we take our quarter one benchmark. Um, it, we're going to do the first, it's into, the semester exam is cut up into two pieces. Um, the first nine weeks that the junior, the material that the junior high covered and then we'll do another one on um, probably Monday, that'll be the part two of the junior high, uh, the second nine weeks that they did at the junior high. So you have to take the same test that they do at the junior high. And that's what we are preparing for. So we're going to start with the back page of the review packet and look at question number 10. It says, Diana has $1,575 in her savings account. Okay. She has a banking account. She deposits. When you deposit, you add. So when you deposit, you're going to add $140. A few days later, she transfers $600 from her savings account into her checking account. Write an expression to represent the banking transactions. Okay. So, expressions don't have equal signs. So how much does she start off with? $1,575 in her savings account. She deposits $140. That means you're going to put plus $140. She transfers $600 from her savings account to her checking account. We're still in her savings account. So you subtract $600. That is part A. Write an expression. That's all you have to do. Are there any questions when it asks you to write an expression? You all understand what it wants you to do. All right. The second part says what is the new balance? To get the new balance, you just add this and subtract. You will not be allowed to use a calculator on your benchmark test. There will be no calculators allowed. Now the computation here is not hard. You're going to have 1,575 plus 140. That will give you the sum. 1,715. So what is her new balance? We're not done yet. That's the sum. And then you take the sum and then you're going to subtract 600 from it. So the new balance will be $1,115. I think that is five points on the test. On the exam, there is also a question similar to number 11, fraction application. Henry's rose bush was three-fourths a yard tall. He pruned the bush by cutting off a half a yard. When you prune, you cut. So you have three-fourths minus a half. He measures the rose bush today and it has grown three twelfths yards more after it was pruned. So then you add three twelfths. How tall is the rose bush now? If they ask you to write an expression, that's your expression. And how tall is it now? Well, we would change um, one half, three fourths would be two fourths. 3 fourths minus 2 fourths, another name for 1 half, is 1 fourth. Then you have 1 fourth plus 3 twelfths. You could rename 3 twelfths as 1 fourth. 1 fourth plus 1 fourth. Do you see how I got 1 fourth from 3 twelfths? 3 divided by 3 is 1. 12 divided by 3 is 4 gives you the answer two-fourths, which equals one-half a yard. That is how tall that it is, one-half a yard. Are there any questions? You all know how to add and subtract fractions? This is the paper you did for homework yesterday. 
Now, yes, I see a question. Uh, go to the restroom. All right, now there will be properties on the exam. In the first one, when things move, that is the commutative property of addition. Now remember, the commutative property is true for addition and multiplication. It is not true for subtraction or division. The same is true for the associative property. It is true for addition and multiplication. It is not true for subtraction or division. Do you hear me on that? Be very aware. Okay, so here it keeps its identity. So it's the identity property of addition G. This is the commutative property of multiplication B. This is the identity property because you are multiplying by 1 of multiplication F. This 9 plus 3 plus 2 equals 9 plus 2 plus 3. This is the commutative property because they moved around. So the answer is A. Number, this next one is H, the inverse property of multiplication. That is not on your exam. I know we didn't really go over that too much. Don't worry, that is not a choice on your exam. Um, this one is D, the associative property of multiplication. The parentheses moved around. This is B, that one's the commutative property of multiplication. This one, um, again, is the H, the inverse property of multiplication. And the last one is E, because you're adding zero, it doesn't change the identity, um, the identity property of addition. Any questions? Yes. I will tell you, on the test, it has boxes. And it says, um, are these equivalent? And if you say yes, then you have to say which one of the properties makes it equivalent. If you say no, then you don't have to do anything else. So that's how it is on the test. I think there are four boxes. And some of them are no, some of them are yes. All right? They're, they're reasonable. I looked at them, and I really think you kids will be okay on these. Ordering and plotting numbers on a number line. Okay, I always circle. Now, you won't have a paper version. I'll give you a piece of paper you can take notes on, uh, but there's not a paper version of the test. Order these numbers from least to greatest. Well, I always would write down my negative numbers first because they're the smallest. Negative 2, then negative 5 tenths. 8 ninths is less than 1. It's 0.8 repeating. Then you have 2 and 4 fifths, which would be 2.8. 8 ninths, or excuse me, the square root of 16 is 4, and you know the square root of 12 is smaller than 4. Now, you won't have a calculator to do the square root of 12, but you know that the square root of 12 would be in between um, 3 times 3 is 9, so it's in between a 3 and 4 times 4 is 16. So this would be in between, excuse me, you'd put a 4 there, 4 times 4 is 16, so the square root of 12 is in between those two, and it's just a little closer to the 3 than it would be um, to the 4, all right? So you would place those on the number line. So negative 2 would go here, negative 1 half is in between 0 and negative 1, 8 ninths is almost 1, 2 and 4 fifths is almost a 3. Um, the square root of 12 is like a 3 and a half, and the square root of 16 is a 4. Any questions on that? All right, so on this page we are good with properties, and we are good with putting numbers down. Yes? I am getting ready to do that page next. Nice uh, lead into it. Okay, well, we'll start at the bottom. Rational and irrational, part seven. Okay, rational, if you can write it as a fraction, um, it would be rational. 
This is irrational. It has a dot, 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 and it has no pattern. Now, if it has a pattern where you can draw a line over it, it's rational. This is rational because you can draw a line over it, okay? This is irrational. I'll tell you, kids, the square root of 2 is irrational. The square root of 3 is also irrational because if I put in the calculator, um, which you're not allowed to do, 2 square root, it goes on and on forever. The same thing if I do 3's square root, it goes on and on forever. So remember, the square root of 2 is irrational. The square root of 3, the square root of 4 is 2. So when you get an exact answer, it's not irrational. Yes? So if, we, um, if it um, goes on and on and there's no pattern, it's irrational? That is correct. If it goes on and on without a pattern, it's irrational. Yes? So negative integers are rational? Yes. No, 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 no. This is rational. Okay? Negative 2 is rational. Um, rational, the square root of 25 is 5. That's rational. Pi is irrational. Okay? There's only one that's, well, there aren't very many that are irrational on your test. Just remember the square root of 2 is irrational. The square root of 3 is irrational. Let's see, is the square root of 5 irrational? Um, it goes on and on forever to the square root of 5. So those are some numbers that these are irrational. Can you remember that? One of those is on your test, and you need to remember that it's irrational, okay? So one way of finding the square root is you can divide the number by 2. two. Yeah, well, like you try to figure out, you know, hey, the square root of 2 is 4, so all of these... These are um, less than 2, okay? And they're greater than 1 because 1 times 1 is 1. Yeah. All right, now let's go to the next group. You've got to know how to do fractions. We did these yesterday, didn't we? For those of you that were here, I have the video that goes over those. When you add and subtract fractions, I'm at A and B now, you have to find your common denominator. Between a 5 and a 4, it's 20. 4 twentieths plus 10 twentieths is 14 twentieths. That simplifies to 7 tenths. I want to go over B. This is a help, help question. We have thirds and fourths. Change them to twelfths. That's your common denominator. 3 times 4 is 12. 1 times 4 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 3 times 3 is 9. Oh no, 4 won't subtract 9, so you borrowed from the 5, it turned into a 4 and 12 twelfths. That's still a 5. 12 twelfths plus 4 twelfths gives you a big 16 twelfths. Now, 16 minus 9 is 7 twelfths, 4 minus 2 is 2. 2 and 7 twelfths. Any questions? All right, then you are multiplying and dividing fractions, and you got to be careful because there will be some integers in these. That means there will be some positive and negative numbers. In this problem here, when you multiply fractions, you change them to improper fractions. 8 times 4 is 32, plus 7 is 39, and don't forget it's negative. 39 eighths times 9 over 1. No shortcut. Negative 39 times 9 is negative 451 divided by 8 gives you the answer of negative 56 and 3 eighths. In letter D, they're both positive, so you don't have to remember if it's going to be positive or negative. The answer will be positive. You'll have 8 ninths divided by 20 over 3. Don't forget... Keep, change, flip, 8 ninths times 3 over 20. I simplified before I multiplied, and you get 2 fifteenths. Any questions? Now, yes, Connor? Yes, that's what I have right here. Yeah, I, it's keep, change, flip. I ran out of room to show below it, so I did it to the side. Yes. Is that negative four eighths? 
which number? On A, B, C, or D? Yes. Yeah, because that's why I have the negative sign here. Yeah. Okay. Now, in letter E, when you subtract, you add the opposite. Okay? The answer is going to be negative here. So we have negative 12 and 4 6 minus 7 and 4 fifths. We have 20 thirtieths will not subtract 24 thirtieths. This is another help help problem. 12 turns into 11 and 30 thirtieths. 30 thirtieths plus 20 thirtieths gives you 50 thirtieths. Minus 24 thirtieths gives you 26 thirtieths. And 11 minus 7 is 4. Now it's negative, so it's negative 4 and 26 thirtieths, which simplifies to negative 4 and 13 15 this one is pretty easy. Negative 5 sevenths plus 3 sevenths is negative 2 sevenths. Any questions on fraction operations? All right. Then we'll quickly review the top part here. Um, integers negative 6 plus negative 3 is negative 9. Negative 3 plus negative 8 is negative 11. You're multiplying negative 35. Negative 6 plus negative 2 is negative 8, plus 3 is negative 5. PEMDAS. There are some PEMDAS problems on your test, so make sure you know how to do these. Um, parentheses first. 9 plus 7 is 16. Then you're going to take 5 times 16 is 80. You then have 2 plus 80 minus 4 plus the square root of 16 is 4. Then you have 2 plus 80 is 82 minus 4 is 78 plus 4 gives you the final answer of 82. Um, letter F, negative divided by positive is negative 9. G, you do the parentheses first. Um, 2 plus 2 is 4. Now, on that, you're going to do 144 divided by 2 first, and then take that answer times 4. 144 divided by 2 is 72, times 4 is 298, divided by 9. 3 to the second power is 9. That gives you the answer 32. In the next problem, negative 3, add the opposite, plus 15 is 12. Any questions? All right, then let's review to the front. Exponent, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 81. 3 to the 4th power, as, when it says write as a product, it's 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. 5 to the 3rd power as a product is this. That's what you do when it asks as a product, okay? No, not unless it says evaluate or solve. Okay, name like terms. First thing you do is get rid of the subtraction signs. Add the opposite. 9x plus negative 4x is 5x plus 7. That's your final answer. Those are your like terms. Your final answer is 5x plus 7. You can't do combine anything else. Get rid of your subtraction signs. Add the opposite. 8x plus 1x is 9x. Those are your like terms. Then you have 9x plus negative 7y plus negative 20. It's the same thing as 9x minus 7y minus 20. In letter C, our like terms, first of all, you get rid of your subtraction signs, are 2x squared and negative 6x squared and 3x squared. There are All of those are like terms. So when you take 2x squared plus negative 6x squared, that gives you negative 4x squared plus 3x squared 
gives you negative 1x squared. Then don't forget your plus 7. So there are several ways this could be written. It could be negative 1x squared plus 7. It could be 7 minus x squared. 7 plus negative x squared. There are several ways that you could write that problem. I don't think it's really tricky though on the test. Our like terms, after you get rid of the subtraction sign, are 7x squared and 2x squared. Our constants are negative 10 and 5. When you combine them, you get negative 7, or positive, when you combine them, you get 9x squared plus negative 5, or 9x squared minus 5. Square roots of 64 is 8 of 49 is 7, of 36 is 6, of 16 is 4. And remember, the square root of 3 is irrational. It goes on and on forever. Okay. Um, expressions. Replace n with 30. 30 minus 12 is 18. Uh, negative 3 times negative 14 is positive 42. 4 times negative 5 is negative 20, plus 24 is positive 4. And negative 3 minus 10 will be negative 3 plus a negative 10, and that's a negative 13. Just a few more notes here before I give you the test. That'll be 24 plus 8 plus 7. And then when you would solve that, 24 plus 8 is 32, plus 7 will give you the answer, 39. This problem for PEMDAS, you're first going to do parentheses. I, do you want me to stop? Sorry. You're going to do parentheses first. 5 plus 3 is 8. Negative 2 times 8 minus 3 to the second power is 9. So, negative 2 times 8 is negative 16 minus 9. Add the opposite. You're going to get a negative 25. Be careful with your integers, kids. The square root of 3 is irrational. 3 to the second power is 9, 3 to the third power is 27, and 3 to the fourth power would be 81. <clears throat> the identity property for addition is when you add 0. The identity property for multiplication is when you multiply by 1. Now, um, question 11 and 12. When I looked at the test, question 11 is similar to this question 10. Part A, you have to write your expression. So on the exam, you have to write an expression. This is what they want you to do. And yes, kids, it is a banking problem. And then part B is where you solve the expression. You give me the answer of how much they have in the account. <clears throat> Any questions? No. All right. Oh, can you go over 